Hello and welcome to what is my podcast about Wimpy Bites. Uh, that's kind of, I guess, what we're stuck calling it now. <laughs> my yes! Name, my name is Keith and I'm joined by Peter Akerley. Hello! And Matthew Grace. Hello. So this is a bit of a different format as we mentioned before in previous episodes. Uh, this is where we kind of just take a Small dive bite. exactly into a bigger story that we wanted to cover in a bit more depth but couldn't with the normal format. Yeah. For this one specifically, we're talking about JoJo, and there's no way we could cover all of JoJo in a single fucking podcast, so this was the way to do it. Yeah, so the first part, uh, so we did Phantom Blood for a full episode. Uh, that one is already up if you want to go back and listen to that one. But we'd recommend it before jumping into this one, as we're going to go through all the parts in order. So they kind of just build on top of each other. Uh, so for today's episode, we're going to be going over Battle Tendencies, JoJo Part 2. So... Let's just get right into it and see where we go from there. So, Battle Tendencies, uh, the second part of the JoJo, this takes place uh, two generations after the story of Jonathan and his fight with Dio. So, uh, Rina made it safely to the United States and lived her life. Uh, she raised her uh, newborn son, George Joestar II. Uh, he ended up having uh, a son who is the protagonist we're following in this story, which is Joseph Joestar. Yep. George Joestar, showing no special talents whatsoever, unlike his son and wife, who both are talented in Hamon. So, essentially, uh, the story ends up starting up with uh, Joseph and Arena are coming to America, and they're here to visit Speedwagon, because Speedwagon might have found something. We have the opening scene of him and Straight So finding just a full fucking wall of these stone masks that caused yeah. so many problems in the free part. And there. a single man in the, so- in, in the center of the stone masks who all their readings indicate is alive, even though he seems to be a part of a pillar. Thus, we're going to dub him a pillar man. And they're going to fully agree with this. Yep. Everyone's like, yep, that's cool. So, Straits has essentially been called in to use his hamon to kill Buddy on the inside before he can fully wake up. And Straits acknowledges this plan and then says, fuck it, what if I kill all of you guys out here and put on this mask so I can get the power of a god? Because Hamon didn't actually allow me to live forever. Which I would have, I probably would have said, oh, that's quite the breaking character, but we don't know enough about Straight Up because he was there for two fucking scenes of part one. Yeah, we got very little backstory on Straight Up. All we're told now is that he's been practicing Hamon to try and live forever, only to realize that he still fucking ages, and that's no good. Yeah, so. he just ages slower, and that's something we kind of find out in this one, that Hamon users just age a lot slower than normal people. Unless they're Joe Stars, in which case they die super young and never get to find that out. <laughs> well, yeah, at this point, Joe Stars have a bad tendency of dying young because Jonathan died uh, young and then his son George we find out died during the first world war yeah yep uh, so there's this whole uh, looming uh, bubble of man Joe stars don't make it into their 30s the best part is this is the second Joe star we've followed and we already know just stars don't make it super long and that's probably gonna continue but George Joe star the first to be fair he did make it into his like 50s yeah yes he and was the last Joestar to last. And our newest Joestar, Joseph Joestar, is very different from what we've come to. Yeah, he is not the protagonist we <laughs> he experienced. Ain't, he in ain't your granddaddy's Jojo. <laughs> yeah, because he's a completely different Jojo than his granddaddy. Exactly. I, I get what you're trying to say here. Uh, so the Joseph we end up getting in this one, or Jojo, not Joseph. <laughs> yes. But he is rude and crude yeah. and he cares about women and saying what you're going to think before you think yeah. it. He still has good morals, but that's about it. Uh, he's got morals, but he has no gentlemanly qualities, we should say. Yeah. Yeah, our kind of introduction to him is him getting pickpocketed by a kid, him chasing after the kid to find a bunch of cops roughing off, and then very much in the fashion of his great grandfather. Saying, the kid didn't steal anything. I gave it to him. You should let him go. Except in this case, the cops are a lot less willing to go along with that plan. Because these particular cops are crooked. Yeah, so they decide they're going to keep the wallet and also uh, arrest both of them for getting pickpocketed and for doing some pickpocketing, I guess. Uh, And Joseph is having fucking none of that. He's just like, I got these cola bottles. How about, fuck you? He knocks him out with the super secret Hamon Cola technique it's that just, we all know about. This is where we find out that Joseph learned Hamon pretty well, from what we can tell. Can but, like, it. without training, it's just, like, kind of something he yeah, picked up naturally. Yeah, they, they never address how he picked up, because the only people that could have done Hamon training with him would have been straight so. But because during the story, we find out that he never actually met straight so until straight so came after him. But. 
Who else caught him yeah, Hamon? It's you know that his, it's, we find out much later in the series that his mother knows Hamon, but explicitly refused to let him learn about Hamon because of the fact that so many people who practice Hamon ended up dying as a result mm. of their fights. Yeah. And she didn't want, essentially, to have the effect of, oh, he's got the skill, so he's going to just summon danger to himself. Little as you know, just being called Jojo does that enough for you. Yeah. Uh, so he ends up getting attacked by Straitso, because Straitso, after uh, killing Speedwagon and, and all of his friends, and letting the Germans have the pillar... I just... I need to go back a second, because this is an audio podcast. In case it wasn't painfully obvious, there were very aggressive air quotes around the word killing uh, Speedwagon. But yes, go on. I think I put the right inflection in my I just, words. <laughs> I, I need the audience to know. And also it's Speedwagon. Yeah. That's true. He's never going to die, I assume. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so essentially, uh, Straitso is like, well, the only person who can form my plans is a Jojo. So I need to eliminate the Jojo so the Jojo doesn't eliminate me. Exactly. And that plan works out in pretty much exactly how I predicted, in which case the JoJo ruins it for him. Yeah, so there's a, a series of things that end up happening where uh, Arena and uh, Smokey and JoJo all go to a, uh, like a fancy restaurant and they end up finding, oh, Speedwagon's dead, he was killed by Straitso. And I can't remember if they directly address it, but pretty much JoJo finds out, or assumes at the very least, oh, that means Straitso's going to come for us next. Because at the very least, if no one told him, this Jojo has been shown to have really good skills at observation and pickpocketing. He's he's what? clearly a very intelligent young lad, even if he doesn't yeah. Obs- comport himself as such. Or observation and prediction. Yeah. Yeah. But he's also got like the sleight of hand skills. He uses those two clacker balls as like a weapon uh, yeah. quite a bit. He's able to sneak things in and out of people's pockets. Uh, so he definitely has skills when it comes to just if. The JoJo's were all D and D classes. He'd be the rogue, hands down. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. It's like sure, he's still got that signature JoJo muscular physique, but he's definitely less the muscle fighting, head to head kind, and more strategized. Yeah, he outsmarts his opponent and beats them out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Straitso does come for JoJo. And him and Smoke here in a diner, and the, the beautiful thing about how this goes is. Unlike, you know, Jonathan Joestar, who would have met him head on and we're going to get away from this town because there's people around. He just uh, pulls out a machine gun and just unloads into this man before he even knows it's straight so. Yeah. Into a fucking open dire as well. Like, there are people inside the building directly behind who he's shooting. And he still goes ahead with it. We also learn the other uh, super famous technique that he is uh, fond of using. Which is once he realizes that straight so is still alive, he runs the fuck away. <laughs> yeah. We're initially kind of given the idea that, like, this is a slightly cowardly move, but we also realize it's more of his kind of predictions and observation skills, realizing if he sticks around here, there's a lot of human fodder that Straitso could use to attack him. So he's both running away and also leading him to a much less populated area for them to fight more safely. No, I want to point out, it isn't just he unloads the machine gun and then gives up there. He reverse pit pockets a whole vest of grenades onto Straitso. <laughs> oh, yes. Yep. That's true. I forgot about that part. <laughs> So he just, like, is trying to destroy him with any means necessary. And really, we end up saying that, oh, when he starts running, that's kind of his way of, like, that's his thinking time on yeah. how to beat an opponent. He's not running to get away. He's running to give himself time to think. To be fair, this first episode is also the first time we see his instance of he's, like, in a verbal sparring match with someone. Like, matching wits with another person. And then he pulls out the line... Now you're going to say blah, 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 blah. And then the person exactly says blah, 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 blah. Wait, how did you know I was going to say that? Which, like, the moment he says that line, why do you continue with saying the line? You've already been caught. If you're caught off guard by the fact that he knew what you were going to say, just don't fucking say what you were going to say. <laughs> and that's everyone's reaction to it. No like, one no one just says, how did you know I was going to say that? It was, oh, well, I'm saying the exact... Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, it happens, like, several times throughout this arc. Oh, God. Uh, So, they end up having their kind of final showdown on the bridge. Him and Smokey are running, and then he ends up into a situation where Straito has taken a woman hostage, and he's like, oh, you can, uh, you know, come after me and save this woman, and then I know that you are a threat, so I will kill you now. Or you can just run, and then I guess you were never a threat, but this woman's gonna die. Yeah. And he tries to play it off, too. It's like, I don't fucking care, so that woman's pretty ugly. And he's like, why do you assume I would care about saving this random woman? I'm not my grandfather, just, like, throwing that out. <laughs> I'm not my granddaddy's JoJo. 
Okay. I guess Keith is going to be the problem child in the Wimpy Bites. Um, but yes, then he pulls out the ingenious technique of knowing about the eye laser slash super pressurized blood that's inside their body that they shoot out of their eyes, which I'm very upset about knowing how that power works now. Yeah. Uh, and so he decides to protect himself by using a shot glass to redirect the beam back at straight so and hit him and hurt him real bad. Yeah. And then it's, you know, just kind of like a light fight until the sun comes up and then Straits dies. And then Straits is like, well, oh, here's all the information you need. Yeah. Speedwagon's not dead. He's here. Speedwagon's not dead. And also, he's been captured by Germans. Go save him. He's in Mexico. Yeah. And that's when we get the shot of, oh, uh, Stroheim, uh, the German soldier, not a Nazi. Not a Nazi. Uh, has a Speedwagon and he's trying to find out all the information he can about the Pillar Men specifically because they've moved him there. And he decides to call him Santana. Or, if you are watching the anime, Santa Ana. Yeah. Yep. Which supposedly means, like, the Southern Wind or something like that. But he's just named after the band Santana. Yes, absolutely. That's just the excuse they give in the show. Uh, yeah, we're calling him this, like, the Southern Wind that he is. But really, he's just named after Santana. Yeah, so Joseph ends up leaving Smokey with the arena to take care of her. Uh, or mainly just to, like, cover for him because he's scared as shit of arena. Oh yeah, he's fucking horrified of her. <laughs> And he goes off to save Speedwagon. Now, this is where some of the interesting things start happening because Speedwagon, as we know, is the leader of the Speedwagon Foundation. Like, the, the pretty much have unlimited resources and technology to fight vampires. Yeah. But no one caught on that Speedwagon wasn't dead. Yeah, you feel like he would have some sort of failsafe for, like, people to figure out he's still alive and... Maybe track him down. Like, clearly he's got friends in the military and shit like that. Like, Yeah, and resources all over the world. But the only person that apparently knew that he was still alive were the people in that military base and straight zone. Yes. Anyways, so Joseph breaks in to try and save him. Uh, meanwhile, the German scientists essentially shower this pillar man with blood until he fully awakens... To try and determine what his power set is to figure out if they can use him for Germany. Now, there's a few funny things in this, too, because uh, one of the things that people bring up a lot, because uh, there's a fun little joke of, like, Araki forgot or he just can't follow his own logic and things. Uh, a lot of those are just people not paying real close attention to what's going on. Uh, but in this one specifically, it's the fact that they call him Santana. Uh, and then he refers to himself, and the other pillarmen later refer to him as Santana. So how how did that oh, coincidence yeah. happen, right? Is kind of like the joke there? How did I not notice that? <laughs> no, I fully fucking noticed that. I assumed this was the way I fixed it in my head, which was that his name was always Santana, and some form of his, like, psychological powers manifesting, like, implanted that idea in the German scientist, and they were just like... I want to call him Santana, so we're going to call him Santana, and that's our idea, not his. So there's actually a fun explanation on how this works. The first one, how he knew they called him Santana, was, uh, as we learned, he learns the language through the observation uh, when he kind of breaks free a bit. Yeah. Uh, but in this situation, the vents, we already found out that he was able to hear them from far away, so the assumption would be, well, even in the stone pillar, you could probably still hear them, because yeah. he reacts mm -hmm. to certain things. And then... For the other three pillarmen, when they come in, they refer to Santana as a person, but they don't say it's the other pillarmen saying that, they just refer to Santana. So the idea is through inference, they figured out, oh, they're referring to our other friend. So mm. it's pretty much for the sake of simplicity. No one says, well, no, my name's actually this long thing in this language that you clearly don't know. It's, yeah, sure, I'm Santana. Sure. Fuck it. Whatever. That's your word for my name. Let's go with it. All right, moving on. <laughs> if you translate my name into your language, it's Santana. <laughs> But essentially, Santana ends up breaking up because he ends up hiding in the tube and then going into the vent system. Yeah. And they didn't account for this, apparently. Yeah, because he can has such perfect control of his entire body that he can squeeze through the vents and get into the room with all the German scientists and kill a bunch of people. Now, there's a few other fun things around this. Uh, now, I want to go back just a little bit. Before we get to this part where Joseph gets in the facility, he has to sneak on to the German base. And to do so, he comes up with the idea of, I'm going to dress up as a woman and pretend to be uh, one to sneak into the base. And the Germans immediately sneak the it. <laughs> yeah, this isn't like other shows or things like that where, like, a very burly man dresses up as a woman and then, like, 
to play it off as a joke, the guys are like super into this new mysterious woman. They're like, no, you're clearly a guy. I am not on board with this. Which just pisses Joseph off, so he just knocks them out and yeah. takes their clothes instead. Yeah. So he sneaks out of the base, and at this point, that's around the same time Santana is going through the vents. And we Stroheim kind of comes off as like a complete douchebag up to this point, but then you find that like he's actually not stupid as well. Because he's like, oh wait, the vents, shit, get away from that vent! And then it's too late, the guy already gets taken. Yeah. And Santana is in kind of like a learning phase right now, kind of trying to figure out what's going on, learning the language, and he ends up learning it. But Stroheim is fully ready to fight this pillar man. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. And then, you know, Joseph shows up. He's like, oh, I'm here to save Speedwagon. So they have to fight against the Pillar Man together. Yeah. Mainly Joseph. Because yeah. he's the only one that can use Hamon at this point, which is the only thing that's known to affect these guys. We also get another cool moment of Stroheim and this is where we start to realize that he's actually a pretty cool dude who we should all be friends with, which is Joseph decides that the only way he can actually fully defeat the Pillar Man is to use the sun against him. So he just tries to carry him up the stairs to get him out into the sun so that he'll die on contact and ends up getting stopped by the Pillar Man fucking with his muscles through weird vampire-esque powers. Yeah, so the Pillar Man can kind of like, uh, kind of in the same vein as he was able to go through the fence by reshaping his body, he's able to kind of phase through things. So uh, there's a few times where the Pillar Man just kind of kills somebody by walking through them. And then just ripping them apart as they walk yeah. through them. Because yeah. every single aspect of their body is eating them while they're there. Yeah. Anyway, so Joseph gets stopped in the stairs. And Stroheim starts carrying him up as well. He's like, I'll get both of you out of here. And then he gets caught on his leg. And he's just like, chop my leg off. And Joseph's like, I'm not going to do that. He's like, you do it right now or else we're all dead. And he's like, all right, cool. This guy's on board with having his leg chopped off. Let's chop off his leg. It's just like, Stroheim initially seems like kind of a dick for what he does to Speedwagon. But then he's like... Fully on board with sacrificing himself to kill this yep. fucking Pillar Man once he realizes what a threat he poses to yeah, humanity. Yeah, if this Pillar Man gets off this base with any free reign, it's a danger to the whole world. Yeah. yeah. All he cares about is his goals, his ideals, and his beliefs. Yeah. And then uh, the fight goes on. Jo uh, Joseph gets pretty beat up. Uh, Stroheim is presumed dead because he essentially... Uh, we find out that... Santana can kind of hide people's bodies without killing them. Yeah. So, uh, Triumph's like, hmm, he's inside me. Only one way to get inside of me. Grenades. Which, surprisingly, doesn't kill him, but yeah. Yeah, because the smoke from the grenade <laughs> then yeah. blocks out the sun. Yeah. So, he ends up deciding he's gonna hide down a well to survive, and it's another one of those falling down a long shaft, similar to the first uh, arc of Jojo, where they're falling... Down the impossibly tall building. Yeah. But then like, the thing that's funny about this too is like, St. Hill's whole plan is if I get in this well, I live. And Jojo's trying to stop him from getting in this well. But then we find out the sun's at the exact spot above this well. But it doesn't matter. You're getting hit by the sunlight. Like, yeah. It's like, why? Why'd you do all of this? Because if I manage to make it into the water, then I'll be fine. I don't know. But Joseph and Jojo even is like, at the end, it's like, I knew that this was going to happen because I knew the exact spot of the sun. It's like, then why did you make a big deal about stopping him? Yeah, I don't know. It's fucking weird. So at this point, it's Strime's presumed dead. Sorry, presumed dead. There we go. Thank you for the air quotes. Um, and Jojo realizes, oh, there's another pillar because uh, this one is in Rome and we need to go and stop it. But I also need to be trained. Yeah, he specifically goes to Rome to be trained in Hamon by his grandfather's trainer's grandson. Straight... Very connected uh, relationship right there. Caesar Zappelli. Caesar Zappelli, Baron Zappelli's grandson. Uh, so he goes to Rome to kind of meet up with him. Does not make friends with him very no. quick. They kind of hate they each other. Immediately get The standard Jiropro procedure of they hate the person, but then they become best friends. Yeah. Uh, so they fight. It's another one of those moments of uh, Zeppeli saying, I'm going to defeat you with this woman. And Judge will be like, I'm going to defeat you with... Fuck it, this pigeon, and then... <laughs> yep. <laughs> he does his classic pickpocketing technique of pickpocketing a pigeon into the girl's mouth, so that when Zeppeli kisses her, the pigeon comes out of her mouth and attacks him. Oh, it's great. <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? The man's special move is bubbles. Yeah, you're right. Um... So anyways, they fight, and uh, Zeppeli's good friend, the German scientist, or German soldier... Uh, takes them both to the Pillar Men site. Yeah, and I believe this is in the Colosseum underneath? Yeah, it's yes. in a secret area beneath the Colosseum. Uh, and so they discover these 
three different pillar men. Well, they go there to track them down because that's where the three pillar men are kept. Only to find that everyone there is dead and something horrible must have happened. It was uh, the pillar men. It was the pillar men, of course. Mm. Uh, and that's where we first meet the three other pillar men uh, by the names of Wamu, ACDC, and Cars, of course. Yeah. Just uh, really uh, leaning into the <laughs> naming things after bands. Yeah, in the comic, it's just Wham, ACDC, and Cars. But they ch- they cleverly changed uh, ones to ECDC, yeah. and the other one is Wamu. But the third is still Cars. It's yeah. Still Cars, but it's Cars with a K. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. see. Because in an audio thing, like a TV show, the way you spell Cars makes a huge amount of difference. Important. <laughs> but it is still spelled with a K. It's significant. Trust yeah. me. Cars instead of Cars. Got it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So they're um, ready to just go wreak havoc on the world and do their shit, but uh, Joda decides we have to stop them. Well, Caesar wants to stop them because they killed his best friend, who was essentially two days away from marrying a girl, which is the equivalent to being two days away from retirement. Death flag. <laughs> yeah. Death flag. Yeah, he was like, I have my whole life to live for! Yeah. Uh, so anyways, uh, they decide to fight them. Uh, the pillar men are just like, no, fuck you, why, why yeah, they're not would even, we engage with you? They're not even on their radar. Like, the fact that the German friend got killed was just because he didn't step to the side, because they didn't give a shit about it. They're just like, I'm making it to the exit, and I'm gonna, it's pretty much that scene from The Simpsons, where Bart's like, I'm gonna close my eyes, start swinging my hands like this, and if you get hit, it's your own fault. Yeah, he doesn't even, like, attack him. He does the phasing through thing, and phases through him, and destroys half of his fucking body. Yep. Yeah. So this is the part where uh, Caesar gets his hand, his ass handed to him pretty quickly in this fight. And Speedwagon's like, well, I, I can't do shit here. And then Jojo also is pretty much like, oh, I'm losing. I better run away. And Caesar just starts hating Jojo more. It's like, you bastard! You're leaving us to die! But turns out he was actually just leading, uh, was it Wa- yeah, Wamu, Wamu away? Because Wamu was the only one who stayed behind. He's like, I'll give you guys a few moments of life. Yeah, I'll fight with you. You get like three minutes of life and then you die forever. <laughs> and then we get the uh, Jojo ca- rail car fight uh, which is pretty fun. Yeah, so during this fight, uh, Jojo is the first person to land a blow on Wamu in his entire life. And so Wamu like, is clearly impressed with Jojo, which is why he tracks him down and decides to kill him. Chases him through a rail car. Uh, and then Jojo just like fucking bluffs his way through the rest of it. And he's just like, man, it's crazy. The one guy who's ever landed a blow on you was completely untrained in all arts and uh, just imagine if I had like let's say a month to train. <laughs> if I had you some other time I probably would have beat you. Yeah. Like, what did you say? <laughs> you know what? I like your spunk and I like your honor as a warrior. I'm gonna agree to that. Yeah so he ends up putting the ring around uh, his heart and it's like well uh, this it's, is going to kill yeah. you in this amount of time when the poison releases unless you get the antidote which is in this ring. And then ECDC shows up and he's like, you know what, fuck it, me too. And he just puts another one. Like, yeah, that sounds like fun. Let's do it. Like, yeah, now you don't just have to kill one of us. You have to kill both of us. This is around your esophagus, making it harder to breathe. Meanwhile, Cars is just there like, oh, Cars, do you want in on this? No. <laughs> no, come on, stop messing around and let's get going. We have things to do. We have Which fucking is a, plans. A good insight into all three of their characters. We need to go find Asia. Yeah. The stone of Asia, to be specific. Walmart's all about fighting. ACDC's just looking for a good time. And Cars wants to get shit fucking done. So this is where both kind of Jojo and Caesar realize, oh, we kind of need to train more. So yeah. they seek out Lisa Lisa. A woman who is definitely not either one of their mothers. Exactly. I yeah. mean, she's too young to be their mothers. Yeah, she's essentially their age. If we forget everything about Hamon. And yeah, the Asia. thing we learned during the first episode, which is that training Hamon allows you to age much more slowly. Uh, and then uh, they first meet her, and then she immediately just shoves a mask onto Jojo, and it's like, fight me. Yeah. You can't breathe properly, or you can't breathe properly anymore, now you have to fight me. And he's like, alright, I'll see what I can do. And manages to walk on water a little bit, and she's like, ah, I'm impressed with your cut up your jib. I'll but train you. I'll train you. And then takes him to a tower. But can you train here? And then pushes that into a pit of oil. And she's like, you just have to climb up along this oily pillar and you can't use any techniques to climb other than using Hamon. And if you don't make it to the top, then I'll never train you. And he's like, ah. Oh. And you'll be dead. Yeah, and <laughs> he's also like, you're dead. just joking, right? Right? And she just walks away. <laughs> Which is a great moment because as I already joked a couple seconds ago, She's his fucking mother, and she's just like, yep, yeah, no, you're going to this bottom of the pit to potentially starve to death. Yeah, but also, if he doesn't get the training, he's just going to die anyway. True. true. Although I do like the fact that like, his motivation to get out of this pit just is like, I'm going to get revenge on that woman so hard. Yeah. Yep. So then they 
climb a pillar for like two episodes. Uh, yeah, Caesar's doing good, but Joda takes a while to figure out that he has to use less surface. Yeah, because if he slaps his whole body against it, then the Hamon's relatively weak because it's spread across his whole body. But if he just uses his fingertips to conduct the Hamon, it's much more powerful. So they become oil Spider-Man. Yep. Uh, they end up... So Jojo gets about halfway up and discovers a little crack where he could rest his hand, take a bit of a break from using Hamon the entire time. Which is a trap that they were all expecting. <laughs> which, because climbing the Hamon oil is hard enough. Yeah. Uh, so... It shoots out like a pressure washer level of fucking oil towards the walls uh, that they now have to climb through. And Caesar's the only one who can do this because he's proficient with Hamon enough to conduct two different types of Hamon at the same time. Pulling with his feet to hold on to the wall and pushing with his upper body so he can pass through this Hamon bear or not Hamon. This oil barrier that's formed. Now, this does lead to a really cool scene, though, because uh, Jojo realizes, I can't do the two Haman, so I'm just going to surf the oil stream. Yeah. Yep. And wasn't the whole thing for the oil because, like, water conducts Hammond really well, but oil doesn't? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's why... Because oil and water don't mix. Yeah. So that's why the training was so tedious. And I like the thing, too. It's like, you have to climb up only using the Hama with no other techniques. But Jojo didn't fully climb the tower with Hama. He didn't finish climbing the tower. He just kind of jumped to the other side, and then uh, Caesar grabbed him. Yeah. So, yeah. Training complete. And that's when we meet everyone's favorite characters, uh, Messina and Loggins, who are going to individually train them from this point on. Lisa Lisa doesn't have as big of a role anymore. She's got to look after this red stone of Asia, you know? It's just important, and all this stuff, and... We've definitely not heard of that a couple minutes ago when... Yeah, I'm sure it's not going to play any important roles. She's yeah. just the guardian of it. Yeah. So then, almost immediately, Cars and ECDC show up to... Try oh, no, to it's just ECDC. Oh, is it just ECDC? Yeah. Yeah. Or not Cars. I thought Wamu was there. Nope. No. Oh, right. So that's, I, I was trying to figure out how... Yeah, Because just... Car... Because ECDC gets killed, but the stone still gets stolen and taken away. And I was Spoilers! Trying to out, Fuck it. because... Yeah, <laughs> The three pillar men are discussing the ruby, and then ECDC is like, I'm not going to wait, I'm just going to go ahead myself, because they don't stand a chance against me. Yeah, so it's, uh, pretty much we get a montage of them training, and then, uh, both of them end up going off to fight against one of the two, uh, guys are training them in a fight, so Caesar has to go fight on top of a tower, like a bridge type thing, and Jojo has to go fight in a pit of nails. <laughs> yeah, it was essentially a much larger scale bed of nails type battle. Um, but he gets there, and the person he's supposed to train with is already dead. And I don't know why I said already. That was not an expected part of the training. He was not supposed to kill him, but he <laughs> is already dead. dead. There's only one way to this training. Dead. <laughs> he's dead now, so who's he supposed to train against? Oh, good thing ACDC's here. Spoiler <laughs> alert, he dies. I already forgot. ACDC's gonna be your sensei now. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> this uh, is kind of... Because we found out ACDC's power is kind of like fire, I guess. Well, yeah, it's, so... It's like he can superheat his blood. Yeah. yeah. Each of the three of the pillar men have essentially a different type of power. So, Wamu has the power over wind, so it's not that he controls wind, it's that he can move his body fast enough to create strong wind forces. And he's got, like, a hole in his forehead that he can shoot tornadoes out of or something. Something like that. By sucking it in through his spine or something like that? Like, holes in yeah, his back? Yeah, something like that. Um, And then... Yeah, ACDC has the power of such precise body control that he can superheat his blood and shoot fire or something like that. Yeah, and Kara's just a massive dick. And also has blades coming out of his body <laughs> that are covered in diamond and teeth that move or something. He's got like chainsaw blades coming out of him. It's weird. But also, yes, also he just has a massive dick. No, he is a massive dick. <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyways... Um, ECDC dies, but doesn't fully die because his brain shoots out of his body before it is fully destroyed. Well, you're, you're rushing over the fight because it's actually a pretty interesting fight too. Because this one is just ECDC essentially just playing with Jojo, while well, Jojo is just outwitting him completely with the oil string. <laughs> yes, he's using oil string to conduct Tamon to cut him to pieces. Yeah, he ends up managing to trick him into going into a specific position. So it looked like he was kind of just mindlessly like trying to dodge the whole time, but he was actually just getting the wire all around with the spikes so that he could kind of set the trap, hit ECDC, and just kind of rip the pieces. We also find during this fight that ECDC is just like a complete bitch. <laughs> yeah. There's the other thing we learned. This is another great moment of seeing JoJo's kind of like 
street magic skills, essentially is what I'm going to call it, because it's <laughs> not just pickpocketing. But, like, ECDC catches on to what JoJo's doing, and he's like, oh, I'm just going to cut the rope in strategic places so that it's not going to tangle me up. But JoJo, like, specifically laid out the rope in such a fashion that even if it's cut, other pieces will tie those pieces together, and it'll still work just like as if it wasn't cut. Because he's a street magician and knows how to cut a rope. But Joseph, jo- a Joseph Joestar, mind freak. Yeah. ACDC dies like a little bitch. Uh, his brain stays on JoJo's back, which JoJo recognizes as his shoulder feeling especially tight after the battle. Yeah. So maybe he pulled something. <laughs> well, as we discussed with Jonathan, this at this point, Joseph has so many goddamn muscles, I'm not even sure he feels things anymore. <laughs> Fair. So anyways, the... Spinal brain jumps off of him and onto, uh, fuck, what's her name? The Susie Q. Susie, Susie Q. Q. The romantic interest. Uh, and ends up taking over her to steal the, uh, the Asia gem. gem the Red Stone of Asia. Red Stone of Asia, that's what it's called. And mail it and then come back and be like, hey, I'm going to stop you guys <laughs> from catching up to that because I'm ECDC. It was just like, it's such a funny thing. It's like, oh no, Red Stone of Asia, where'd it go? It's in the mail now. You'll never catch it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which leads to Because this post office in, like, this Roman city is apparently so perfect that it, like, takes less than a day to get the package to the post office in the proper shipment and out of town. Or phone call. Like, why didn't they call the post office and stop this? Like, they literally got in a car and followed the package all the way to Northern Europe? I think it was, like, Switzerland or something like that. Yeah, that sounds mm-hmm. about right. But now the... That plan was come up with by a literal brain, so it can't be it can't be wrong. But that's the flaws. smart part. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's not wrong that's because the smart part had the it's a foolproof plan. plan. <laughs> not stoppable whatsoever. I mean it worked. Yeah. Somehow. I think the reason it worked is because the members of the Joe Squad, the JoJo Squad, the party, whatever you want to fucking call them, uh, weren't using their brains. Yeah, and in this fight too, uh, we see that Jojo actually has made a lot of progress in his training, not just from beating ECDC in the fight, but at this point he's also able to do like a team move with Caesar, where they both hit Suzy Q with the right type of homin. And yeah, essentially he recreates what he saw Caesar do on his own, where Caesar, to get past the oil wall from earlier, produces two different types of homin. He's like, this is how we're going to get ECDC out of Suzy Q. We're going to do that exact same thing on a larger scale, where I'm going to produce a lot of homin, you're going to produce the opposite kind. We're going to push him out of her body with magnets. Hamon magnets. I mean, Hamon just stick to a lot of shit, so I wouldn't yeah. like that would be a really good magnet. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. Yeah, they beat ECDC. Same One player. pillar man down. Yep. Yeah. And so then they get in the car to chase after him. Meanwhile, Jojo like makes it very clear that when he comes back, he is fucking Suzy Q. Like, it is oh, going yeah. down. Now, is this because it's Suzy Q or he just wants the residuals of ECDC? <laughs> Yes, yes to both. <laughs> um, I refuse to comment on that. He's literally coming back to fuck any residual ECDC out of Susie. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, that, that's kind of like the thing with JoJo. Like, it focuses so much on like the story so much that like they kind of just put like the romantic or like the things there and just kind of never address it. Yeah. Because, like, the, the uh, Joe, Jonathan Arena thing wasn't a big part of the story, even in the comic. It's just like, oh, they had a thing when they were kids, they got together, but she's, like, there for, like, probably, like, seven or eight chapters in total. It's there, it's happened, here's the characters, here's the story, listen to this instead. Yeah, this is happening in the background, so I have an excuse to write a future generation, and they can be descended from these guys, because I have to say, he fucked at one point in order for him <laughs> to have descendants. If there's one thing I want to make very clear about all my characters that are JoJo's, they fuck. Yeah, the... Like, I just, I can't let it be emphasized enough. JoJo's fuck. Like, that's a thing they do. It's kind of important for the story. I can't have a grandson to JoJo unless JoJo fucked at one point. Oh, boy. So they end up tracking down. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, they end up... They end up tracking down the Redstone of Asia to the train. But when they get there... The Germans have already shown up to get the stone. And then there's another German in a car that they're making fun of. And he's like, ah, oh, Joseph, meet me in my hotel room. Ooh. Oh. So As go- we said, the JoJo's fuck. Yeah. So they go to the hotel room. And we don't really get much at this point because it kind of switches over to Cars' perspective. 
and he is going to retrieve the stone by himself because, you know, at this point, I don't know if he has that much trust in his... Uh, well, ACDC is already dead, and Wamu is not like a tactical mind who you would use. He's more so like, he's the hammer you use to hit a nail, but when you have a specific delicate plan you need to perform, you But when you want to cut all these nails into tiny pieces, you send cars. Yeah, exactly. Which he quickly does when he just, like, he does, like, full Terminator vision on the building. It's like, okay, seven targets, one against the wall. Yeah. Three of them are seated. All right, I know exactly what I have to do. And then he slices the building from the side and kills every decapitates everyone inside. Yeah, all of the Germans die. And then Jojo, Caesar, and Lisa Lisa, and the surviving of the two guys, which I can't remember which one it is. I think it's Messina. I think Messina lives. It's a coin flip. Let's go with Messina just for simplicity's sake. But essentially, they end up uh, getting ready to fight, and then that's when they find out that Stroheim wasn't dead at all. He was brought back with superior German science, which he's going to make sure to let you know constantly from this point on. Yeah, German science is superior. That's the one thing I learned from this series. Well, that's one of two things. I learned that German science is superior, and that if your name is Jojo, you fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So Stroheim ends up being like, I'm going to deal with cars myself. And he kind of almost does it. Yeah. We learned that one of the upgrades, because he studied specifically after fucking the whole Santana, Santana survived, or after his fight with Santana. So he, per, or not programs, but he creates a cyborg body strong enough that its pinch will rip the flesh off of a pillar man. It's like, wow, you really like doubled down on this pinch technique right now. And if it doesn't work, I have the large machine gun in my stomach. Yeah. Which has rounds powerful enough to punch holes through a pillar man. Also super cool. And then later on, he just brings fucking essentially UV light bazookas that he wears on his shoulders. He's the perfect machine for taking down pillar man. Yeah. He's trained all his life. And by all his life, I mean like the month or so since we last saw him. Uh, So this fight goes kind of to a standstill. He ends up breaking apart Stroheim, but at this point we're not worried because Stro- Stroheim's the Terminator. He's, yeah. He'll come back. He, he literally oh, yeah. rips Stroheim in half, and Jojo's like, Stroheim! And he's like, not hey. again! He's like, don't worry about me! I'll literally be fine! Go chase after him! Yeah, so they, they have a race instead of just... Because the, the gem's heading towards it, like the edge, and it's gonna fall off, Yeah, and they're both him and Cars are running for it. But why doesn't Cars just use this as a chance to just kill Jojo and just pick it up from the bottom of the chasm afterwards? It's not like, you know, oh no, I'm never going to find it again. Well, we even have this one where, like, Jojo's planning out and he's like, we got to stop just before the edge. So when he slows down and bends over to pick up the stone, that's when I'll be able to attack him. That's when he'll be weakest. And Cars is like, I know what you're thinking. I'm not going to slow down and bend over. I'm going to barrel off the edge of this cliff (laughs) and catch it in midair. It's just like... Then why are you racing to catch it when you know you can just jump off later to get it? Now, Jojo, I know what you're thinking, but did you account for me fucking killing myself? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Yeah, so they they kind of have, like, a little dangle off the cliffside, and Jojo gets out. At this point, they kind of deal with the car situation momentarily. Yeah, uh, essentially, cars falls to the bottom of the cliff, whereas Jojo manages to catch the Red Stone of Asia... And also catch on to what it essentially re- equals a rope made out of icicles held together by Hamon. Yeah. And climbs back to the top and carries at the bottom of the cliff. He's like, oh, you got away this time. I guess I'll just fuck off and deal with you later, maybe. Maybe. I'm just going to go uh, stay at this creepy mansion off on the outskirts of town. I'm going to stay at a creepy mansion on the outskirts of town. That's town. surprising you can see from this hotel. And just like... Wait for you to bring me the stone. Like, that's my plan. I'm not going to come get it. You're going to bring it to me at some point, and that's how this is going to work out. Yeah. And then we finally get Caesar's backstory about why he hates the Pillarman so much, and turns out the Pillarman killed his father. Yeah. His father abandoned his family to fight the Pillarman, and then ended up dying to the Pillarman. To save Caesar. Yeah. Because Caesar was a criminal who then found his father and wanted revenge of some sort, and his father saved him because he was an idiot. Yeah. But also his father didn't realize he was his son when he was saving him. He was just saving him because he saw a kid who needed to be saved. That's all I need to know about Caesar at this yeah. point. That and the fact that he dies. Yeah. Caesar goes to fight Wamu with no planning whatsoever. Yeah. He's just like, I'm going to break in there and fight all on my own. And once Jojo learns his backstory, he's like, oh, nah. He's not an idiot. I got to go save my friend. And 
gets there too late. And here's the other interesting thing about this, too, is, uh, as you were saying, uh, Wamu does have air power, but he can also refract the air to make himself invisible. <laughs> yeah, he essentially uses the air that's flowing around him to bend light, which is a thing that makes perfect sense, as we all know. Um, I'm no scientist, but it checks out. Sure. I mean, light is a medium of some sort. Well, air, air. I mean, I was gonna say light is not air, a medium. Air is light a is a thing that passes sort. through air. And water is also a medium, and water refracts light. Yeah, I and mean, there is water vapor in the air, so it's not a too I mean, far stretch. Air does refract refract light. That's why we have a blue sky versus like yeah. a red sky and a sunset and all that shit. It just takes a shit ton of it to refract yeah. light. So like, he's making a lot of fucking air around him. Uh, anyways, Wamu kills, uh, Zeppeli. Fuck. Caesar. Caesar. Thank you. Uh, well, but to be not fair, before... Wamu doesn't kill Caesar. Yeah, to be fair. He kind of just lets him die after kicking the shit out of him and causing him so much internal bleeding that he's absolutely gonna die. But also, this is also at the same time that Caesar also manages to kind of kick the shit out of Wamu at the same time. Yeah, like, Wamu takes, like, uh, Wamu and Caesar's fight... Both of them don't come out of it in a good situation. No. Because, uh, well, Caesar ends up getting his hand on the nose ring. Yeah. And he then... essentially, like, they fight, they go blow for blow. Well, almost like, yeah, you're going to die now. This is over. I don't need to kill you anymore. And Caesar, like, climbs up the stair and almost like, I don't need to kill You're going to die. Just let it happen. And Caesar's just like, you know what? And he just rips the nose ring out of his face. And almost like, yeah, touche. I'll let you have it. Cool. <laughs> you know, I didn't expect that. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, he uses the last atomic to make a blood bubble with his uh, the ring and his headband. And then the stone of the ceiling just comes down and crushes him. And Caesar dies at this point. Thus ending the Zeppeli line, I think. Until they inevitably go back and travel through time to make a Zeppeli fight in America or some bullshit. Yeah, until they find out that he actually had a brother. <laughs> that was forgotten about in the streets. Brutus Zeppeli. Yes. Ue too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so <laughs> let's be serious. This is a sad scene, as much as we're <laughs> going on about yeah. this. Uh, so especially because like Jojo's like Zippoli, where are you? And he's like, oh, he's under the stone. Yeah, and he sees the blood coming out from under the stone and finds the bubble with the magic powers, and he's like, I love you, brother, because he did have a brother. His brother was Jojo. Yeah, the Jojo, the Jobro. The Jobro. Um. So then Jojo and Lisa Lisa decide to track down Wamu because they see all the blood that he was clearly leaking as he walked back home. And they're like, yeah, let's just do this. Let's and, and this is where we get to see Lisa Lisa be a fucking badass with that guy. She's like, oh, come on, give me a hug. I'm going to stab you. And then she just kind of just fucking walks through him. Yeah, and she walks right past him not paying attention. She's like, hey, you can't do that. But like then her scarf is full of the hum on wire that kills people when mm -hmm. it touches them. And he just fucking dies. And she's like, we don't have time for this. Let's keep going. She did to that man what the pillar man did to Caesar's friend. Yeah. And uh, we find it like, oh yeah, it's vampires. That, that's a thing that the mask does. Yeah. The pillar men created vampires so that they could gain more power. Why aren't they just using more vampires? Turns out they fucking are because they walk into the next room and there's over a hundred vampires there to kill fucking Lisa Lisa and Jojo instead of fighting Wamu and cars like they were planning. But we know Jojo the genius that he is ends up talking his way out of this one again he's like hey how about we just fight in an arena and you get to keep the red stone of asia if you want the best part about this well not the best part but the part i was really hoping for is essentially during this meeting Kars is like we're just going to kill you and we're going to take the red stone of asia like that's how this is going to go down and lisa lisa's like you think i'm dumb enough to have brought the red stone of asia to your home no, of course not. It's back in the hotel room that you definitely can't go search. <laughs> <laughs> I've hidden it. One spot you would never suspect is the hotel room. No. <laughs> but, like, they, like, bluff their way into agreeing to <laughs> Did fight. Did you give it to Strohheim? Um. <laughs> bluff their way into fighting on a later day. I really wanted that scene to end with them walking out of the room and Lisa, Lisa taking the red stone and she's like, oh, thank God they didn't search me before. <laughs> it's a good thing they're fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Which they clearly fucking are. We see a shot of them in the window, just looking out in anger, because it's daytime and they can't go God out. damn, we're honor bound. So anyways, they go back and have the fight that Wamu's been promising to have with Jojo for the longest time. and That's actually a super cool fight, the little chariot race with weapons where 
Joju gets his hands on a hammer and he's like, I'm going to kill you with this hammer. And Momo's like, I'm going to kill you with this fucking pillar. Yeah, we go. That's how this is going to work. <laughs> I got the bigger hammer. Wait a second. <laughs> There's a lot of geometry in this fight. Yeah. There's also a point later on where they have to grab, well, crossbows are laid down for them to grab. And Joju's like, do I grab the small one or the big one? You know your boy's got to need power. I'm grabbing the big one. And he's like, I can't physically draw back the string because it's too fucking big. And I believe it gets drawn back by him falling on top of it when he's knocked out of his yeah, yep. carriage. Yeah, because uh, Wamu does the trick of, like, he kind of, like, banks the shot off the wall so it hits from a different angle. And then Jojo gets the final upper hand by doing this exact same move to him and turning him into a head. Yeah. And then Wamu essentially uses his one head and he's like, I may not be able to see you, but I can still fucking kill you even if I'm just a head. And Jojo's hides behind the fire because oh my god it's been a while since i watched it so i'm trying to remember the logic for why he was hiding in front of the fire it gave him some sort of protection whatever um but then he throws a firebomb at fucking wamu and wamu like brings it into his lungs and fucking explodes. yeah that's why he get near the fire right because the oil mixed with the flame allowed him mm -hmm. that when he did the suction move it would bring it that's what explodes his fucking body leaving him yeah. just ahead Oh, yes, and then he decides, like, some vampires come out to kill him. I'm almost like, no, you're not allowed to do this. He fought with honor and defeated me. He's a man of true strength. And then Ed Wamu just beats the shit out of a bunch of vampires. Yeah. And then he's like, you can go now. You're free. You've won. Fun. I'm dead now. Yeah. And then it's time for Kairos and Lisa Lisa's fight. And that is a super straightforward fight. No one uses any underhanded techniques to yes. win. Yeah. Except for Kairos is a huge dick and cheats and kills her from behind while she's fighting... A vampire who looks like hers. Yeah. And so she ends up getting stabbed from behind and goes down and Joseph's like, no! And he goes up to fight. And this is where Kars just kind of puts holes through her legs and ties her from the pillar and just starts dangling her off the side. Yeah, above like There's spikes. Crystal, crystal yeah. spikes. Crystal spikes are there for whatever reason. I assume that this is now somehow tied into the Command and Conquer series and that's just the like Tiberium that crystal grows from the ground and kills people. I don't know. Um... Yeah, Crystal Spikes fight. Also, if you tied rope through her ankles, I don't think she's ever walking again, which no. she does later. Yeah. Because Hammond. I guess Hammond, man. It didn't unshatter Joseph's bones. Yes. Which, oh, no, that Joseph, was his uh, muscle. Jonathan's bones. No, that was his muscle. Oh, that's fair. We already yeah, did. his muscles compressed the bone back into place. We already know <laughs> that. So this is where we get the, uh, essentially the ending of Bill and Ted where it's, well, I'm going to do this to beat you. Oh, yeah, well, I did this to beat this. Oh, yeah, well, I did this to beat this to beat this. Yeah. Essentially, uh, as Joseph puts it, I outsmarted you're outsmarting me. Yeah. Uh, and they believe they've killed Kairos, only to discover he fell on the ground with a stone mask and a red stone of Asia. So right as all the German scientists are like, time to win this fight with all of our UV rays, Kairos puts on the mask with the stone and... Gets turned into the perfect being. Yeah, and to show off his power immediately, he creates a squirrel. Yeah, he turns his hand into a squirrel and uses that to kill a guy. Yep. It's pretty great. And then goes back to being mostly human form. Well, he gets like weird bird stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah, he grows he some wings. He flies after a plane, makes the wings. Yeah, there's this whole that. fight of like the, the Germans versus the vampires, and they're not Z Nazis, so this is clearly uh, the Germans are the good guys. Yeah. Pre-World War II. <laughs> German science wins the day here, but Kars is so powerful that no one can actually do anything because he's immune to sunlight now. So, oh, at this point, also, Smokey and Speedwagon are here, and Smokey and Speedwagon both know that Lisa Lisa is his mother. And no one's like, should we tell him? No, don't tell him. But I gotta well, tell him, don't tell him. <laughs> the best part is, like, no one explicitly tells Smokey that Lisa Lisa is his mother, he just, like, pieces together, like, Lisa Lisa is the girl who was on the ship with uh, Arena that she saved. That's why she knows Arena. But also, Arena... Or no, and then also the girl who was on the ship ended up marrying George, George Joestar and had the kid. It's like, oh, I figured it out. Lisa Lisa is actually JoJo's mother. And it's just like, yeah, don't tell him that. He doesn't need to know. It's just like... How did he not figure that out yeah, from that it, same amount of information? They have to, and they also give the flashback here, like, as we find out George Joestar died because he found out that one of the British soldiers was a vampire. So yeah. he had to take like, this British commander, but then he died. So Lisa Lisa said, well, I'm going to go fucking kill him then. And she got framed for the... Well, did, she killed him, that's true. Yeah, she didn't get framed. She got 
charged with killing a, a British officer in them. So she had to go into hiding, and that's why Joseph ended up getting raised by Arena from this point on. Yeah. But anyways, Joseph's like, oh, I can't beat him, so there's only one other thing to do. And he starts running with Smokey. Yeah, he's like, you know what my main move is, and just starts running away. Jumps off a cliff, lands in a plane. Yeah, he says, gets in the plane, takes off, and it's the fight of Cars and uh, Joseph in the plane, which... This is probably one of my favorite fights in the yeah, series. This fight is super awesome because Kyrus is like does shit like he turns his feathers into, into like into pro- well he first uses them to like defend himself against machine gun fire and then he turns them into piranha, shoots them into the ship or into the plane and they just start fucking devouring the plane and then fucking Stroheim shows up and he's like don't worry I've got you we're gonna drive this pl-. well no Jojo decides to drive the plane into a volcano because that's the only way that he can kill. Cars can but, think can, will kill him. Yeah. Meanwhile, those characters literally going like, hmm, it's a shame that JoJo's keep dying when they're young. I'm sure that's not relevant. Yeah. Uh, so then, Strohan's just like, jump out of the plane right now if you don't want to die. And JoJo's like, I can't jump out of the plane. I'll absolutely die if I jump out of the plane. And Strohan's like, just fucking do it, you little bitch. <laughs> jump out of the plane. I won't jump out of the plane. Oh, you, we must be friends. You're not willing to let me die. No, the parachute is gone, literally. Yeah. They ate the parachute. Yeah, so then they jump out of the plane and land just, like, to the side of the volcano. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Kairos goes into the volcano and is absolutely dead. And well, that's the end of the fair, series. doesn't go into the volcano. Jojo hits him with the plane yeah. and thrusts him into yeah. the volcano. Yes. And that definitely kills him. Or at least it would. But he's the perfect being. He is. So he covers his body with armor, which doesn't work at first. But then he essentially just releases steam, if I remember correctly. And well, because what we find out the perfect being means is that he adapts super fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he manages to essentially give himself a shell that's mostly oxygen to give him enough time to tunnel through the rock around the volcano so that he can climb up outside of it. And, and he takes off JoJo's arm. Yeah, and then the volcano... And the bottom half of Stroheim again. Yeah. The volcano erupts or something and it starts shooting towards the sky. So what this happens actually is Jojo is like, I can't think of anything. This fight's over. But he's like, wait a second. If the Redstone of Asia can make a perfect being, maybe it can unmake a perfect being. So when he shoots the attack, he ends up putting the gem up to it. It goes past into, it deflects the beam, hits into the volcano, and fucking jettisons the volcano like cover into space. With right, Jojo so and Cars on it. The best part is at this point, Kara starts monologuing about how he's just going to go back down after he kills Jojo. And Jojo's just like, but what you're about to say is blah, blah, blah. And Kara's just like, blah, blah, blah. Ah, fuck. How did you know? <laughs> and then Jojo's like, now you're going to get launched into space where you can never be a danger to anyone again. Kara's just like, that sounds oddly specific for the situation we're in. And Kara's is like, how did you know that? Like, did you plan this? You genius. I'm so impressed. And fucking... <laughs> <laughs> fucking Jojo's just like quietly to the side like nope uh, this is pure fucking luck at this point things just kind of work out for Jojo sometimes yeah, because at this point too Jojo gets rocked up into space and then hits the final Hamon attack which propels uh, Kars just that slight bit further to go into space because that's the only way to beat him and Kars doesn't actually die Kars just goes silent mentally yeah. Because he essentially gets launched into space it's so cold that his body freezes into a single pose and then because of the way space works and momentum, he just rockets off into space and is never yep. in contact with another planet again. Yeah, and yep. it, like specifically in the comic too, it uh, specifies. I think it does in the anime too that like he just eventually stops thinking. Yeah, his yep. mind just stops. It, which is just horrifying because he doesn't actually die. He just like is trapped in his body for like a millennium and then just like. And since his body knows that and he's a superior being, his body adapts to that nothingness and just becomes nothing. Yeah. And then Joseph, who is now thousands of feet in the air on a single rock, dies as he crashes into the fucking earth, and they have a funeral for him. Only he didn't die! He shows up with Susie Q, who's now pregnant. Yeah. So she's pregnant, he has a mechanical arm, and he crashes his own funeral. (laughs) Yeah, he shows up with a mechanical arm, and he's like, German science is great, eh? And everyone's like, how are you alive? Why didn't you tell us? He's like, I told Susie Q to send you a telegram. And he gets, like, real pissed off at Susie Q for not sending the telegram. And then, yeah, he crashes the funeral, and at first he's like, why are you guys all sappy? Whose fucking funeral is this? And then he sees the fucking gravestone, and he's like, wait, what? Oh, oh that's fuck. not good. Oh, no! But they still don't tell him, at least, at least this is mine. Yeah, they still don't. He doesn't figure that out yet. 
So, um, what do you think? Good show? <laughs> Better than Phantom Blood. All right. Well, I think that kind of segues into what we're getting at of, we thought to be fun going forward here, we're going to start ranking certain aspects of the JoJo and piss off the internet. So we're actually going to be ranking JoJo's, Joe Bros, the arc, and the villain of each arc moving forward and adjusting our list accordingly. Absolutely. So yeah, uh, let's start with the most important one, of course, the Joe Bro. Uh, which of... So, so currently the list is going to be one and two. We have two Joe Bros. So for uh, Phantom Blood, we have Speedwagon. And for Battle Tendencies, we have Caesar. Yeah. So we'll... Yeah, as we said, we're just going to rank those two against each other for now. And then as we go forward, once we start talking about Stardust Crusade, we'll rank that one's JoJo against these two Joe Bros. So... Yeah. Speedwagon or Caesar Zeppelin? For me, oh. Speedwagon number one. Yep, number one. A hundred percent. All right, cool. Yeah. So we all agree on Speedwagon. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, the villain. So Dio versus Cars slash the Pillar Man. So I know Keith, you said earlier that you're planning on only considering Cars as the villain. Yeah. Well, e uh, East DC is kind of like a mid boss. He's not really the main villain because as we find out, Cars kind of commands all of them, so he's the leader, even though yeah. they're all and kind of. Also, powerful. the other Pillar Men kind of more acted as growing points for the characters. Yeah, Wamu okay. didn't have evil plans, and we also find out in the flashback of both the Pillar Men that it was Cars and ECDC that were actually the evil ones, and Santana Wamu wasn't it. and Wamu kind of were like their own thing. Yeah. So Wamu just cared about the warrior spirit, so he wasn't actually a villain in a sense, and ECDC was a villain, but he was more like the weak one of the batch. He was like a mid-level. That's fair. Uh, with that in mind, I think I am going to adjust my considerations well and just consider Cars and not consider the other two as well. So for this one, uh, I have Dio Brando ranked number one and Cars second. I personally have Cars ranked number one. I have a feeling based on the few plot points I know come back to me later by things that have been spoiled to me that that will change in the future. But I think for now, just based on the way their arcs worked out, I, I don't consider Dio to be as big of a threat or as compelling of a villain as I think Car as I find Cars to yeah. be. I also think Cars is takes the number one spot for now. Dio takes the number two spot for now. Mainly because Dio's motivation kind of fell flat in comparison to Cars. Like, well, I, I find it's a bit different because with I'm not just considering what their threat was on the scale of things, but Dio, his whole motivation was his hatred for Jonathan Joestar. Yeah, but even in so the his beginning, build up, Cars just kind of feels like it's an after effect. He didn't have any personal feelings towards Jojo. Yeah. It was just he happened to be the guy that was trying to do this. Well, that's one of the reasons that I like Cars more than Dio is. I feel like with Dio, half the reasons he does stuff is specifically to piss off Jojo. Whereas I feel like Cars is that much more threatening of a villain because he's not doing anything because he hates Jojo. He's doing shit because Jojo's just getting in the way. Of his master plan. Yeah, and that's my thoughts too. Because like, back in Phantom Blood, Dio, he hated his father. He gets a chance at a brand new life. What does he do? Does he take it? Kind of, but he decides, I'm going to hate Joseph and, er... Well, it's not that Joe, he decided Jonathan, he was going to hate Jonathan. It was, Jonathan is a stepping stone I need to push down. <laughs> yeah, but it did more feel like he was a villain for the sake of having a villain. Whereas Cars was a villain because of his objectives. Now, okay. if I know Dio's coming back in later seasons, so that may change in the future, but currently as it stands, I prefer Cars as a villain over Dio. Yes, that is what I was hinting at earlier, the plot point that's been spoiled. Dio comes back as a villain later, so perhaps with more character development, I'll adjust my ranking and put him above uh, Cars. Now, now, I will uh, say this. For character ranking specifically... Even though they're the same character, a lot of people will classify it as Dio Brando, the vampire, and Dio, the controller of the world. Mm. So Didn't know that he was a controller of a world. Good to know. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Jojo. Which one's the better Jojo? I like the Joseph Joestar, the one that we got with Battle Tendencies. I agree. Uh, Joseph is my number one. Yeah. Jonathan is just too buoyant of a character to get behind. No, it's not saying I like... Again, it's hard to say you hate anything specifically on these lists. There isn't really anything like that. Yeah. But I find that just Joseph was a lot more entertaining as a Joestar, where in Bl Phantom Blood, 
there wasn't much for character development. It was more of the story, yeah. and the characters have to be in it. Whereas in this one, it seems to be built purely around the character of who is Joseph Joestar. Yeah, I, I feel like Jonathan suffered a lot from, like... It was uh, feeling out the world. Yeah, sequelitis, essentially, or pro prequelitis, that's what I'm going to call it. Where, like, he didn't get a chance to be a character on his own so much because there was too much world building that had to be put into it. Whereas by the time we get to uh, Battle Tendencies, enough of the world has been built that, like, we can acknowledge the JoJo and kind of pay a bit more attention to their specific aspects, so... I think Jonathan could have been better, but I think just because of the way the plot had to work yeah. out. He was kind of shoehorned into his gentleman role. Yeah. yeah. Alright, last but not least, the plot. Which one had a better plot? So mm. I personally, I liked the bo- both the plots. I am going to have to go with uh, Battle Tendencies for the my preferred plot, just because I enjoy the introduction of the German scientists. I kind of enjoy the way they kind of travel around the world, and it feels like it's a problem that's affecting everywhere whereas in phantom blood it just kind of feels like a single small town is at danger so i know that kind of ties into the villain more so than the plot but just i feel like the plot's a little bit more evolved in battle tendencies than phantom blood yeah i would agree uh for me uh so i've gone through jojo more than once and i feel like there's certain aspects of jojo that when you go back you end up appreciating them in different ways battle tendencies actually used to be considered all of the arcs one of my least favorites but when I went back and went through it again, I really appreciated Battle Tenses and a lot of stuff, and I actually found that it started ranking higher up. So I do have Battle Tenses as number one here, and Phantom Blood is two. When it's purely talking about these two, the reason for it is kind of the links to what you're saying. If we're going over the story, Phantom Blood seemed to focus more on the story, but nothing seemed flushed out worldwide. So there was no kind of sense of where you were. It was either Joseph, Ma- uh, the Joestar Manor, Back Alley, Castle, Random Town. Whereas with uh, this one, the world feels a little flushed out and there's a connection. You can feel like you can kind of picture the layout of their path. Yeah. Whereas in the other one, it's kind of spot to spot with like no in between. Yeah. And I'm, I'm in the same boat preferring the uh, Battle Tendency story over the Phantom Blood. Mainly because, yeah, the Phantom Blood story was really good. Despite the fact that the characters were shoehorned into their roles. Dio as the villain. Ned. Jojo as the goody two shoes gentleman uh the story itself was solid the whole kind of back and forth between two i guess adopted brothers now and like their whole conflict and how that grew and escalated yeah i would consider both of them close to each other for like what i would rank them it's just the battle times has that edge where it feels more flushed out and connected so that does mean that we can now Give a definitive rank. Oh, we can give a super definitive ranking on at least three of these things. One of them, there was a bit of disagreement, but majority rules. So, the JoJo is absolutely better from Battle Tendencies. The Joe Bro is absolutely better from Phantom Blood. Well, so far, the only Joe Bro to not die. Yeah. Because he's uh, still in Battle Tendencies. And he's still alive at the end of Battle Tendencies. And he's set up an entire foundation to support the JoJo bloodline. Uh, plot, we all agree that Battle Tendencies was better. And then for the villain, we currently have a two to three vote for... Two to three. Sorry, two out of three vote uh, for Kairos being better than Dio. So, there's your definitive ranking, Internet. Go fuck yourself if you disagree. It will change when you start going through Stardust Crusaders. Yeah. Also, definitive ranking of the first two arcs. Not a definitive ranking at all. No, Battle Tendencies is the best, and you don't have to watch any more JoJo after that. Stop reading. In fact, don't even bother watching Phantom Blood. Just watch Battle Tendencies. <laughs> I, I mean, because it's kind of an aside, but I feel the JoJo arcs do a pretty good job of isolating themselves, that you can actually just start each part on its own, out of order, and not be lost, but you will lose some of the yeah. aspects of it. For example, the Pillar Man and the Mask is kind of explained in... Uh, well, not the, moment, the, the mask specifically and the vampire aspect and Hamid are all explained in uh, part one but they kind of have a, like a tiny refresher yeah. in part two so you, you would know this references to like you know Joseph Joestar and George Joestar and all that stuff all that stuff would be new to you without that background knowledge but it doesn't make the series any worse yeah a lot of the character interactions gain a lot more significance knowing the backstories like Speedwagon if 
you just saw ba- uh, Battle Tendency, Speed Dragon would kind of just be a guy, but knowing his whole backstory from Phantom Blood makes him that much more interesting of a character in Battle Tendencies. Yeah. To see like the growth he's gone through and how much he's dedicated his life towards defeating the vampires. So, like, without Battle Tendencies, or not, sorry, without Phantom Blood, he would be less of a character, but that's not to say that Battle Tendency would be less of a show without Phantom Blood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So that was a moderately wimpy bite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tune back in for our next one where we talk about Stardust, Stardust Crusaders. Crusaders. And where the uh, formula of the franchise gets fucking thrown out the window and everything changes. <laughs> Fuck, come on. Who cares about that? <laughs> I won't stand for this. <laughs> All I care about is what pose and stance I'm using. <laughs>